want you to shut up. You I would say we have up. the freedom of speech until it becomes inconvenient to the kings and queens that own us. And they're clearly exhibiting to the American public and the people of the world that this is just a phony illusion. You have no rights. You have no freedom. In fact, I would question whether or not we have the freedom of speech, is what Mayor Bloomberg says essentially we do. Law in this country, we don't have any order. What we have is a bunch of kings and queens running the show. They want you to shut They want a collective up. consciousness. They want a unification of people. Well, that's all true. But when we're talking about they unification of one mind up. and a unified you know, consciousness for good up. men, that is the complete opposite of what the New World Order is pitching. The New World up. Order is pitching you know, a collective unification of war in Europe and Europe. Right now, I mean, and it's only meant to enslave us. You have the illusion of a democracy. And you see, you only have these rights, these fundamental, supposed, and inalienable rights, when it's convenient for our leadership. Hence the, that key term, convenience. But you see, when it becomes inconvenient to our leadership, those rights are stripped. I want you to shut <laughs> They want a collective consciousness. They want a unification of the people. Well, that's all true. But when we're talking about unification of one mind and a unified you know, consciousness for goodness, that is the complete opposite of what the New World Order is pitching. The New World Order is pitching you know, a collective unification of war Europe and the Eurozone, the United States and Northern Africa, and it's only meant to enslave us. Law in this country, we don't have any order. What we have is a bunch of kings and queens running the show. And this is what we've been arguing for a great period of time on Green Wave TV and on this channel is that these rights are conditional. This is all an illusion. So this and the minute it becomes inconvenient, they change the rules. So this is a big win for OWS and the movement because it educates more and more people around the world that, hey, your rights aren't absolute. They're conditional. When the slave master decides to whip you on the back and get you in line, which was the case today, to remind you who's boss, you'll see how many rights you still have left. They want you to shut up, boss. country. We don't have any order. Case in point, maybe you don't remember Mayor Bloomberg, King Bloomberg. We just bailed out trillions of dollars worth to the big banks in this country so that we could prevent them from going to zero and that we could... Put that on the backs of the American taxpayer and the people of the world. And you notice how nobody talks about the issues. Nobody talks about the reason we have all these people at Occupy Wall Street. And so, as was the case today, as they clear out the park, this is a huge win for Occupy Wall Street because it forced an action and a reaction from the kings and queens that run our society today. You notice how no one talks about that? They just completely avoid it. In fact, I was reading Rolling Stone, and maybe some of you read this article as well, and I like to uh, dig into this magazine occasionally because it's off the cuff and it's somewhat mainstream, but it gives you an idea of what the media is saying about these movements. And it's funny, I, I read this one article called Welcome to the Occupation. It's about, I don't know, five, six, seven pages maybe. And it's funny, I read through the whole thing and it didn't talk about why people were there once. It didn't talk about the fraud. It didn't talk about the bailouts. It didn't talk about the greed. It didn't talk about the corruption. It didn't talk about the wars. It didn't talk about the assassinations. It didn't talk about the endless killing. It didn't talk about anything. It just talked about a bunch of hippies meeting in a park, singing Kumbaya and playing the guitar. They are going to get more aggressive. The slave master, the Mayor Bloombergs of the world, are going to start beating you up a little bit more hardcore than they did last night. And they're going to remind you who the slave is and everything he has in italics. He says, this is a visceral, impassioned, deep-seated rejection of the entire direction of our society. A refusal to take even one more step forward into the shallow commercial abyss of phoniness, short-term calculation, withered idealism and intellectual bankruptcy that American mass society has become. 
If there is such a thing as going on strike from one's own culture, this is it. And by being so broad in scope and so elemental in its motivation, it's flown over the heads of many on both the right and the left. And I think there's a lot of beauty to those words, very eloquently put. And, you know, I've voiced many concerns about Occupy Wall Street myself because there are some things to be concerned about. But really, people are coming to understand, or at least I hope, that this is much bigger than the left-right paradigm or politics or anything that, you know, may have been the argument of the past. This is really about a game-changing and is a game-changer in the way people think. People are begging and hoping for something new. And I posted a video yesterday on an optimistic... Let's dig a little bit deeper into that. They're not absolute. They want a collective consciousness. They want a unification of the people. Well, that's all true. But when we're talking about unification of one mind and a unified you know, consciousness for goodness, that is the complete opposite of what the New World Order is pitching. The New World Order is pitching you know, a collective unification of war- Europe and the Eurozone, the United States and Northern Africa, and it's only meant to enslave us. So what does that mean? Well, what that means is those rights are conditional. And like we've talked about on this channel for a very long time, for the past several they want years, you to what shut we have up. in this country and countries in this country. And it talked about, you know, the dynamic of that community. And it was somewhat interesting of an article, but it missed the point. And there was a follow-up article to that written by Matt Taby, who I'm personally a fan of. Many of you are probably familiar with. Uh, he's been on, pe- uh, on shows such as Bill Maher. Uh, he's quite famous. Uh, he's covered a lot of the corruption over the past several years. He really is almost the writer equivalent of a lot of the stuff we talk about on this show. In fact, he'd be a great guest I should really try to bring on at some point in the future. Our rights, our fundamental civil liberties... Our First Amendment right, for example, in this country are not absolute rights. And that's key. Listen to what he said. They're not absolute rights. And he said, really, the only thing that the First Amendment protects is the right to the freedom of speech. But it does not protect camping and forming encampments with tents and tarps, such as the case with the growing movement of Occupy Wall Street. They want you to shut up. And then to enslave you, the peasants, the groundlings, the serfs. You know, nothing's changed in thousands of years. They want a collective consciousness. They want a unification of the people. Well, that's all true. But when we're talking about unification of one mind and a unified, you know, consciousness for goodness, that is the complete opposite of what the New World Order is pitching. The New World Order is pitching, they want you know, a collective unification up. of Europe and the Eurozone. The United States. 